It is September 11th, 1893 at the Columbian Exposition in what is now the Art Institute of Chicago, just blocks from the blues and greens of Lake Michigan. The bell of liberation sounds 10 times honoring the world's great religions, though I'm not sure how you determine which are the great ones. Aren't they all great? This parliament of world's, world's religions is the first modern interfaith assembly of global proportions. And organizers are hoping for a religious pluralism to come out of it, though it is not actually equally representative of the world's religions and skews heavily Christian, it is nonetheless a brief moment of great hope, a wishful assumption of progress. It is a pat on the back of sorts. Uh, aren't we open-minded Americans? The 1893 Parliament of World Religions was for sure Americanized, but the world was opening up and the American religious footprint would no longer solely be made by Christian boots. We were so naively optimistic back then, back then before two great world wars. The organizers of the parliament envisioned a siblinghood of religion. Each representative from different faiths, traditions were to make a comprehensive statement of faith and what good it has rendered to humanity. Traveling by ship from Bombay to China to Japan and getting off in Vancouver and then across our continent by train to Chicago, the Swami Vivekananda, age 29, arrived months early and without a formal invitation. A Harvard professor recommended him to speak and he was given the opportunity to address, address the parliament. Though initially nervous, he bowed to Saraswati, the Hindu goddess of learning and speech, and felt a new energy in his body. His voice roared with the salutation, brothers and sisters of America. And the crowd erupted in applause. A star was unclouded, an icon of Hinduism was visible for all to see. In his second address in 1893, Swami Vivekananda told a story. A frog used to live in a well. It was born there and brought up there. And it used to think his well was the biggest waterland in the world. One day, a frog from the sea came to that well. When the frog from the sea told the frog of the well that the sea is much, much bigger than the well, the frog of the well did not believe it and drove the frog of the sea away from his well. Vivekananda concluded, I am a Hindu. I'm sitting in my own little well and thinking that the whole world is my little well. The Christian sits in their little well and thinks the whole world is their well. The Muslim sits in their little well and thinks that this is the whole world. But there are oceans, oceans outside our little wells. Swami, Swami Vivekananda was one who could go from well to well, bringing the openness of sea and spreading the expansiveness of a universal religion. For Vivekananda, religion is not a thing of imagination, but of direct perception. Religion is not an imitation of Jesus or Muhammad. Religion is not attained through the ears, nor through the eyes, nor yet through the brain. No strip, no scriptures can make us truly religious. We may study all the books of the world, yet we may not understand a word of religion or of God. We may talk all our lives of religion and never really know it. We may have strong intellects 
and yet we may not know the experience of the sacred. Religion is not going to church or putting marks on our forehead or dressing in a peculiar fashion. You may paint yourselves in all the colors of the rainbow, but if the heart has not been opened, if you have not realized divinity, it is all in vain. Religion is not in books, nor in theories, nor in dogmas, nor in talking, not even in reasoning. It is being and becoming. It is realization. Religion is not based upon the experience of ancient times. Religion is not, is the manifestation of the soul's nature now. Religion is the manifestation of divinity already in the human being. Born Narendranath Data, sorry, Rajiv. In, into a high caste in Calcutta. His father was a lawyer. He began meditating at age seven. Bright and intelligent, he was musical and social. Vivekananda began to prepare to be a lawyer like his father at a university and he studied Western philosophy and science. Shortly after his father died, he decided to become a monk. And his guru, guru was the legendary saint Ramakrishna, and he began to travel all over India. Now it is hard to exactly pin down who exactly Vivekananda, Vivekananda was. Biographers conclude he was an ascetic and an activist, a reformer and a conservative, a patriot and a prophet, a saint, and a philosopher. He very well could have been all of these and everything in between them. He was scientific, yet with a uniquely Hindu spiritual introspection. He helped to start centers for Vedantic study in New York and California. He raised money for the poor in India. He told Americans how great Hinduism is, and to people in India, he critiqued Hinduism, but he always glorified Indian civilization. And he died at the age of 39. Then he quickly turned from a historical to a legendary figure. Dying young will do that. The Swami was highly critical of colonization in India and Christian missionaries. He said, you, you look about India, what has the Hindu left? Wonderful temples everywhere. What has the Mohammedan left? Beautiful places. What has the Englishman left? Nothing but mounds of brandy bottles. Indians don't need Christian salvation. They already have a great religion. Now, I first heard of Swami Vivekananda in my theological studies when I was trying to make some connections between Unitarian Universalism and Hinduism. The Swami's first ever public lecture in the U.S. was given at a Universalist church. And in fact, he spoke at numerous Unitarian and Universalist churches throughout the country in his two trips to the U.S. He was popular among Unitarians and Universalists for a number of reasons. Many were attracted to the personality of this young man, cleanly shaven with a turban and white silk clothes. He had a powerful and compassionate command of the English language and used rhetorical devices with performative and colorful language. He understood and referenced Western culture and Christianity. Now, um, um, Unitarians from a very early um, point, like Emerson Thoreau, were reading some of Hindus' sacred texts. So Unitarians and Universalists would have had some knowledge of Hinduism. And there seems to have been a hunger for a non-Europeanized view of 
religion from India. Many wanted to hear a real Hindu speak. Universalists and Unitarians had the time and the money to explore religions, and many were jaded by conservative religion and were constantly searching for alternatives, much like we are today. Plus, there was this romantic view of the guru, a wise Hindu who will teach us the spiritual path out of the materialistic West. Swami Vivekananda manifested some of these attributes when he said, let others speak of politics, of the glory of acquisition of immense wealth poured in by trade or of the power and spread of commercialism, of the glorious fountain of physical liberty. But these the Hindu mind does not understand and does not want to understand. Touch him on spirituality, on religion, on God, on the soul, on the infinite, on spiritual freedom. And I assure you, the lowest peasant in India is better than the informed of these subjects of the many so-called philosophers in other lands. We have something to teach the world, he proclaimed, in spite of hundreds of years of colonization and persecution. Swami Vivekananda preached the good news of a universal religion, a school of Hindu philosophy where everything is one, where Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Christ are worshiped as incarnations of the same God. Swami Vivekananda was comfortable in the West as he was in India. If modern science is proving anything again and again, he said, it is this. We are one mentally, spiritually, and physically. We are absolutely one. The capital S self is the essence of the universe, the essence of all souls. He pre preached not a religion of a particular community or a country. And though he adored Western science, he saw the limits of reason. It was not adequate for the discovery of the spiritual realm, which needs direct experience. He wanted America to be broader and yearn for a global spiritual awakening. He was the first major teacher of Hinduism to come to the US and pave the way for many more to come. He proclaimed a spiritual humanism of many paths. This unfurling of love of all religious traditions is still felt in our religious pluralism today. Swami Vivekananda was part of a national movement of, in India, a colonial self-articulation that was confronting the Western world and selecting its own destiny. After he died, his followers saw him as a forerunner of liberation in India. He preached a rational and ethical monotheistic Hinduism that accommodated diverse paths, a sort of Hindu universalism with a unity of science and spirituality. He said the same life dwelling up in the plant is the life welling up in the individual, the presence of the divine in all matter. He accepted a variety of traditions and proclaimed that truth is one, just called by different names. As people approach the divine, the divine receives them. All paths lead to this same divine. I'm not sure that you can cook all religions down to some sameness. Religions are complex and diverse as the peoples and cultures of our world. Maybe it is sort of a vague dream, but isn't it appealing nonetheless? The idea of a universal church, a harmony, 
with all religions. The church universal collects all ancient wisdom and modern science, recognizes in all prophets and saints, in all scriptures, a unity, promotes solidarity and peace, harmonizes reason and faith, devotion and social duty, and recognizes that all our spiritual and religious yearnings are contained in one human family. The universal church is against partialism and sees a unity to all life. It is a vision of religion that is cooperative, non-aggressive, inquisitive, and incorporates mutual respect and reconciliation. Prophets of all religions have had their unique visions, voices, and raptures, but many, if not all, tell us of the self joining the larger self of the world. Swami Vivekananda was one of them. We can become aware of an absolute and not only become part of that, but identical with that. Maybe it's all pie in the sky and the world was much more optimistic late in, in the late 19th century. But I think we can live out a oneness here in our universal church. May we forever ring our bells of unity. May we forever be aware of the sea of life and possibility outside our limited wells. May we be the church universal, always promoting a oneness without an end. Blessed be and amen.